Welcome, this is Alan Cepeda with This Day in Texas History for March 6, 1836, a Sunday on that year. At Washington on the Brazos, Sam Houston leaves uh, there after getting Travis's letter from March 3rd. A group says they want to go to the Alamo and fight. Sam Houston asks them to stay and finish forming the government and the Constitution. Without those items, recognition from foreign governments could not come. Without recognition from foreign governments, no money could come or aid. Uh, Sam Houston sends an order to Fannin to head to Gonzales. 5.30 a.m. The Mexican Army are in the set positions before the battle with four divisions and cavalry back to keep any Alamo defenders from escaping or Mexican soldiers from quitting the fight. The Army advances. The Texian Sentinels fall, uh, fell asleep and were killed by the advancing Mexican Army. The Mexican soldiers begin yelling, Viva Santa Ana, and the buglers make their call. The Battle of the Alamo has started. Travis runs to his cannons, yelling to a group of Tejanos, uh, manning a cannon, No reinventarse, muchachos, which means don't surrender, boys. Right there on the northwest corner was Damasio Jimenez, who had been with Travis at uh, Battle of Anahuac and had voted for him at the Battle of Harrisburg. Damasio had followed Travis all the way from up there to, to uh, back to Behar, where his brother and his father lived. Uh, so that's who probably he was talking to. This cannon crew had Demacia Jimenez in the group and was, as I said, he was a friend of Travis. Um, Demacia had loaded and set the cannon to fire when the Mexican army arrived and he had helped bring the 18-pounder to the Alamo. Mexican troops reach the wall. The Texans have to expose themselves to fire. Travis is shot in the head and dies, one of the first defenders to die in the, in the battle. According to his uh, slave, he didn't die immediately. It took him a little while, so he bled out, but he was basically dead when he got shot in the head. Mexican army regroup and attack two more times. The column on the east and west side shift to the north because of the heavy fire. Essentially putting three columns, so three-fourths of the Mexican army all basically on one wall, that north wall, which makes it impossible. Uh, the column on the east and west side shift to the north because of the heavy fire. Santa Ana sends in his reserves into the north wall, overwhelming the defenders at the wall. As the north wall is being overwhelmed, the cannon crew in the northwest corner continue to fire their cannon at the breach in the wall. This allows everyone else to drop back to the, uh, the long and short barracks, uh, which was the final stand positions. A Mexican commander organizes the troops and they fire in unison at the cannon crew, killing all of the men manning the cannon. So these men stood there with a the cannon firing at them, being reloaded, and uh, had the guts to sit there and fire and take out the entire uh, cannon crew. So. That's just some incredible bravery on their side because if you've ever been by a cannon fires, that's some scary stuff. This was a big cannon too. The west wall is overrun and some men jump the wall and try to escape. They are killed by the waiting cavalry, 400 men strong. The men in the cattle pens jump the wall at the horse corral and are also killed. Crockett and his men are the last holding a wall and have to fall back into the chapel with all other walls taken. Mexican army turns the Texas, uh, Texans cannon on them and blasts open the doors in the barracks, sending the troops to fight in hand to hand in each room. Jim Bowie is killed on his bed. Um, Bowie was pretty much out of it. The movies, you know, to, uh, the early movies with John Wayne, etc., showed him fighting to the end and all this. He was out of it. He, the last Alamo movie probably had it right. He could barely get his knives and guns up. So, all walls and areas are taken except for the chapel. Almiron Dickinson runs into the room with his wife and says, quote, Great God, Sue, the Mexicans are inside our walls. All is lost. If they spare you, save my child. Once again, everyone believed that they would execute the women and children. The final stand involves Almiron Dickinson, Teribu Lasoya, Gregorio Esparza, James Bonham, and others manning the cannons, plus David Crockett and a couple of his men. A total of 11 men made the last stand in the chapel. <laughs> The cannons blast away the remaining barricade to the chapel with a last shot, hitting Terribio Lasoya in the chest and killing him next to his cousin, Gregorio Esparza. So they had turned the cannon in there, and they had already cleared out all the barricades, fired one more time. It went flying in, cleared out the rest, and it hit uh, Terribio Lasoya in the chest. It most likely went right through him. Uh, the Mexican troops fire into the chapel. Dickinson fires off his cannon, and the remaining Texans charge. Gregorio Esparza dies of a gunshot to the chest and a sword wound to the stomach. The main men fight and die. Uh, Almiron Dickinson was found also the same thing as Gregorio uh, with a shot to the chest and a sword wound to the stomach or a bayonet wound. 
The Mexican troops go around bayoneting all the Texans dead to make sure that there were no survivors. Brigidio Guillermo is found and claims he is a prisoner of the Texans. He had uh, gone into the little prison they had and put, put himself in there. The soldiers do not believe him, but he also be asked to talk to General Cos, who he served on, under before deserting during the Battle of Bejar. Cos sees Guillermo and embraces him, and he is spared. Cos had left a whole bunch of his uh, men there who were sick and injured, so he could have believed that, that he was uh, one of those men. All the women, children, and slaves still alive are spared and taken out of the area for safety. A couple of slaves were killed during the uh, craziness of the, of the battle. Travis's slave Joe is forced by Santa Ana to show him the bodies of the Texian leaders. Francisco Ruiz, the acting alcalde of Bejar, is told by Santa Ana to identify the Texian leaders. Ruiz and others involved in the burning of the bodies would later identify in statements the bodies of several of the Tejanos, including Ruiz's cousins, Damaso Jimenez, Gregorio Esparza, and Terrible Lasoya. All bodies are burned except for Gregorio Esparza. His brother received permission to bury him because his brother was a member of the Presidio Forces of the Alamo under Cost. Uh, Ruiz's father was signing the Texas Declaration of Independence along with one of his cousins. So he was left in charge of Bejar. Uh, the bodies of the Alamo defenders at, are burned at 5 o'clock. Francisco Ruiz reported 182 bodies, uh, the ones that they burned. Ramon Carro reported 183. De La Pena and a Mexican soldier would put the count at 253 and 257. Uh, possibly the men who tried to fight their way into the Alamo was in the latter count. So don't forget there was that one battle, battle at the old mill that uh, no one really knows who fought in it. So Santa Ana it, said it was but a small affair. Members of the Lone Star Chapter of the Sons of the Republic of Texas would like to remember their ancestors who died in the Alamo. The following is a partial list of the relatives of ours. Jesse B. Bowman, Tapley Holland, Demacio Jimenez, Gregorio Esparza, Terribi Lasoya, Elal Melton, and Jim Bowie. This has been Alan Cepeda for This Day in Texas History for March 6, 1836. Remember the Alamo.